Sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. The Samsung Galaxy Flip is the original iPhone of foldables. That's what some people have been saying. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Well, first, no, totally isn't. But I get it. I get the allure of flipping phones. I've done umpteen videos about them. Hit subscribe and you can see all of them. They're new, they're fun, they're different at least so far, because there are only a few of them out right now. In a few years, I expect there won't just be many, but many generations of many. So they won't be so new or so different anymore, but they'll still be fun. And they'll still be welcomed by people who want a big screen that isn't so big in their pockets or bags. That's what happened before, right? Back in the days of feature phones or dumb phones or whatever you want to call them, both candy bar and flip phones were super common. There was nothing new or novel about either. You just weighed the trade-offs and you got the one you wanted. Smartphones obliterated all that for a hot while, turning candy bars into slabs and flips into memories. Now, during that period, the iPhone was the paradigm shift. The moment when smartphones went from the early adopters of Trio and Blackberry and Windows Mobile to the mainstream acceptance of the iPhone. And yeah, sure, the iPhone was still limited in so many ways, but all the ingredients were finally there. So much so, even if you didn't upgrade to the next iPhone, you still got the App Store and everything else that defined the modern smartphone for the next few years. And the Galaxy Flip, for all it is, just isn't that. Not yet. It's closer akin to the Trio 680 or the BlackBerry Curve, or whatever you want to call the refinement of the early adoption devices, when the huge honking antennas went away and we were pretty much at peak PDA pager phone. And that took years. So it's incredibly impressive Samsung got from the fold to the flip in just a few months. But even the flip, as improved as it is, is an early adopter device. And I'm gonna say again what I said before, no one should be buying them, not yet. No one who doesn't have money to burn or making content to earn. No one who plans on buying and keeping one single phone for the next three to five years and needs it to last that long and well. If that's you, you should still stay far, far away. But the concept itself is still super intriguing to me. The iPhone of flip phones, to get to that, to be that, the iPhone flip, what exactly would it take? I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. Well, first, something other than a zero friction coating. Recent iPhones, the inductive charging ones, are slippery enough. If they couldn't stay on the inductive pad though, they wouldn't even charge. So yeah, let's just fix that. Next is the tiny display. It's just too tiny to be usable or useful. Motorola did better in my book with a bigger external display. Sure, it takes more power and leaves less space for battery, which is a double whammy, but the utility is just critical. By folding a phone, you reduce its surface area by increasing its thickness and protect the insides by creating a potential additional failure point on the outside, the hinge. You also trade the convenience of it better fitting your pocket or bag with the inconvenience of you having to open it every time you want to use it. Those seconds and that wear and tear add up. So, Perhaps counterintuitively, the more you can do without having to open it, the better. Hence the external Moto display being better here than Samsung. Now, I mentioned the other day that Apple already has the Apple Watch interface that could work on the outside of a flip phone, sort of a pocket watch interface, so to speak. And that could certainly be useful for quickly glancing at the time or data like weather, appointments, sports scores, ski conditions, or any complication really and of course, notifications. But Apple also has those size classes and a compact, compact iPhone interface could also be shown for quickly jumping into apps and doing a few brief, important tasks. Things that don't require a full screen or keyboard without ever having to unflip the phone. About the only other thing that'll still need to be addressed eventually is particle and liquid ingress. See, these current experimental flip phones just don't have anything like the dust and water resistance we've all come to expect over the last few generations of phones. But only the last few generations. Flashback to even the early days of LTE phones and being able to use them in the rain or at the beach was just a beautiful dream. So an impressive IP rating will have to happen to make flip phones truly fully mainstream again. But I think it's fair to say it'll remain one of the major trade-offs for a while still, and one of the last things that'll happen. There's the story about Steve Jobs having his original iPhone prototype in his pocket, taking it out, seeing how his keys had scratched the then plastic screen, and demanding his hardware team switch it to glass with almost no time left before it had to ship. 
and they did it. They went to Corning and now we all have some form of Gorilla Glass on our phones, whether it's branded that way or not. And there's just no equivalent story for modern flip phones. The Galaxy Fold and Motor Razor shipped with plastic screens and nary a CEO was there to stop them. And the Galaxy Flip with a hair thin glass screen overlaid with plastic. But I'd argue scratching isn't the most important issue here. First, chemically hardened ion exchange glass still scratches. It scuffs, it still breaks. Material engineering is all about trade-offs and physics, as always, can be super hostile. Second, folding phones fold. So in some of the situations where even Gorilla Glass screens are the most vulnerable to scratches, like in pockets or bags, they're all closed up and protected. Honestly, it's the outside glass that we're still gonna have to worry about here as well. But the holy grail remains making a foldable screen that's experientially as good as a slab screen. And that means it isn't just hard, but feels hard and smooth under your fingers. No lumps, no bumps. One that doesn't rise up, detach, delaminate, or anything else that makes it feel like someone shipped you a model kit rather than a production unit. And without an appreciable crease or break or separation, or just some pragmatic but less elegant hingeable separate screen solution. As far as we've come with the Galaxy Fold to the Galaxy Flip, we're gonna have to still go exponentially farther before we get to even the original iPhone moment here. And then there's still specs. Now, I've been saying for years that companies that bring specs to an experience fight will just lose every single time, and that specs have become a semi-toxic crutch in tech review circles. And sure, some markets are more big numbers on package sensitive driven than others, but overall, it's not the components that matter, it's the performance. Critically though, that doesn't just mean today's performance, but next year's and the year after that, and maybe a couple more years after that. Again, people in the tech industry change phones every year, if not month, if not week. We live very much in the now. I'm using an iPhone 11 Pro. My family though are using the iPhone 8, the iPhone 7, the iPhone 6S, because the vast, vast majority of people don't, can't buy new phones every year. They buy one every two to three years, maybe four to five years. And that means for modern flip phones to become truly mainstream phones, they have to be built to last three to five years. To get them through the day, to take photos of their kids, and to launch and run not just Android 10 and iOS 13 apps, but Android 14 and iOS 18 apps one day as well. And if they can't keep doing that, their value just goes down year after year after year. And that brings us to the price. Currently, it costs you about one and a half times as much to get a flip phone that's about three quarters as good, but may only last you about one quarter as long. There's a lot of unknowns here. Of course, which is why I'm really hoping we see three months later, six months later, one year later, two year later, and more reviews for all the early foldable phones. But basically, we're currently being charged a premium to get a phone that folds, that flips, and that's fine. I mean, I wish the companies were more upfront and put a big experimental brand on this stuff. Hell, given the current market, that even might help them sell more. But either way, it's a huge premium. And unlike an iPhone 11 Pro Max or a Galaxy S20 Ultra, you're not getting more for paying more. You're getting novel. You can make, and some are trying to make, a fashion argument. You can absolutely make a they are just so damn fun argument. But the first time is certainly gonna be way more fun than the number 1000 time, no matter how you flip it. Some of that will also be offset by reduced costs as the technology matures and manufacturing scales. And you guessed it, that's when it becomes more mainstream as well. And we'll all know when we've reached that point when we can go into a store and choose between a candy bar slab or a flip fold, both with the same trade-offs now that they had back then. Because at the end of the day, it's just never about cost. It's always about value. And that's one of the main reasons I made Nebula, the new streaming video service I'm creating with Dave Wiskus, Thomas Frank, Legal Eagle, Tirzu, Sarah Z, Lindsay Ellis, and many, many more. We're building it because we want a place where creators can try out new content ideas that might not work on YouTube, or for people who simply don't wanna watch on YouTube. And because it now comes bundled with CuriosityStream, which is just $19.99 a year, a year, you can get access to thousands of documentaries and series like Bright Now and the Coffee Buzz episode where experts reveal some of the surprising secrets that make your favorite coffees taste the way they do. And getting to mainstream foldables is gonna take so much coffee, 
so much. By signing up, you won't just be helping me out, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where we can create the content you really want us to create. So go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And now Nebula as well. Enter the promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks CuriosityStream and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. So those are my current thoughts on foldables and what still needs to be improved and overcome before they're mainstream, before we'll see anything from Apple. But now I wanna hear from you. Hit like if you do, subscribe and flip that bell gizmo. It not only helps out the channel, it's the only way YouTube will actually tell you when new shows go live. And then hit up the comments and let me know. Is it too much with all the foldables already or just nowhere nearly enough? Thanks for watching, see you next video.